Welcome to our podcast. I'm Jess. I'm Mandy. And we are Drama Bonded. Hi. Hello. You guys, we've missed you. We're sorry our schedule has been a little off lately. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I did like have all the best intentions of coming out here and podcasting alone. And then the valley happened and I was like, there's no way. I am just going to be so gloom and doom on the podcast. Like I will lose us all the listeners we've worked so hard to get. Like we need Mandy's levity and lightness and fun and joy. And I had none of that. So I missed you and it, you know. Well, this is how we balance each other out. It's true. It's true. Because when I was like working it up in my head, I'm like, I can't say any of this. Like (laughs) mm -mm, nobody wants to hear me rant. I'm just going to be that crazy angry lady. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so just a heads up of like why some of our scheduling and podcast episodes haven't been, uh, I don't know. On time. On time. Regular. There you go. Mm -hmm. Uh, my relationship of nine plus years ended recently, kind of abruptly, not expected, Um, So I'm going through one of the hardest transitions I've had to go through. Um, I guess I'm sharing this with you guys, one, so that you understand kind of the flexible schedule needs right now, but also just because we talk a lot about relationships and love and communication and all of these things. And so it feels like a relevant topic for me to share with you guys. And I feel like even if I don't know you and you're listening or if I do know you and you're listening... If you listen to us, I would consider you a close friend. There you go. So this is what's going on in my life, and I just need a little grace. Yeah, we can give you grace. And And I won't sign you up for The Bachelor. (laughs) Don't you? Oh, but I have you old. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah, I know. By their standards, we're hags. Ancient. Uh, But Greg Grippo is single, so. (gasps) He is not. (laughs) He is. Oh, my God. He and Victoria unfollowed each other on Instagram, and there's the T. I... Would totally fuck Greg Grippo. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, um, but I also want to give Jess a shout out because Jess and Saul have truly shown up and helped me in my darkest hours. Oh. And so I just want to say thank you on the podcast You're for so being such an amazing that. friend. Whatever. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, guys. That's what's happening. But We are showing up today to, we're going to catch up on Vanderpump because while I didn't have the capacity to talk about, um, not this last week's episode, but the prior week's episode, because I was balls deep in a move, um, I (laughs) messaged Jess and I was like, fuck, I really want to talk about this episode because it was the first um hard conversation or I, I don't know it wasn't really a conversation it was the first interaction between ariana and tom that i think we've all been kind of waiting to see and holy shit yeah that was that was bananas so much so that like as mandy is going through the emotions of everything going on we would have these moments of like common peace and then we'd just be like oh my god vanderpump and then like <laughs> unload on that and then you know swing back to everything else but like it was it was worth even like talking about in the height of some really difficult things. So yeah, and I wasn't really. I'm still not in my angry phase of this grief, but I will say it was really cathartic to watch a woman just fucking go at it, feeling what I was feeling. Oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> I wondered. I was watching this. I'm like, Mandy's gonna have feelings on this. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, oh no 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 no. We're going to do our candy review. Oh, yeah, yeah. Candy, 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 I found Haribo Unicorn Alicious, which is a very good name now that I've said it out loud, gummies. Um, I don't know. What would you think? I thought that they have the classic Haribo texture, which I like that Haribo gummies are chewier and not, a little bit less gummy than some gummy bears. That being said, I do think that the unicorn size is a little large for how chewy the texture is. Yeah, your jaw kind of hurts by the end of it. Yeah. I do think it's awesome there's six flavors because we've reviewed a few candies lately that only have like three flavors. Yeah. And I think I was really excited once I got them down off of the shelf. So if you go to Kroger, they're like hidden on the top shelf for some reason. 
but there's banana and cotton candy and tangerine, apple, apple, blue berry. raspberry, and yeah, berry. Yeah. And I mean, six flavors, six flavors. That's that's decent, except yeah. they only gave us like three bananas, but it's still fine. I also complained about the fact that a serving size is five pieces, but there's six flavors. I feel, yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's fucked. bad design. Come on. I mean, not that you need to be worrying about what a serving size is, but just saying it should be designed so that you can have all the flavors in a serving. Well, yeah, it's not hard. Six candies is 120 calories, like rather than five for 100. Yeah, just up this the calorie count. Lazy. Yeah. Boo. Yeah, it's, it's less about, because like, don't. Get it twisted. I'll just eat that whole bag. It doesn't matter. However, my brain would, yeah, with you. A serving size is all the flavors. I like them. I think they're a little too big, but if you like Haribo, you'd like them. Yeah, and they're cute and they're fun. Yeah. I was excited. I'll share them with my friend Della. Oh, she would love them. She would love them. So I'm excited. Um, also, I feel like we need to note that, I guess, like news moment. The Golden Bachelor is getting a divorce. Oh, yeah. There's been talk that Teresa's job is too intense and that Gary wasn't about that life. Interesting. What are your thoughts? I mean, it's always sad, right? Like when things don't work out. And I do oftentimes think the things that can really attract you to a partner can become the things that drive you batty about them. And I could see somebody being, and not to blame her, like if that's how she wants to live her life, like no shade towards Teresa for being into her job. But like if Gary's retired, wanting a simpler life, more time to do leisurely things, like that that would be kind of at odds. So yeah, and it sounds like after her late husband passed, her job has kind of become her new identity, you know, that it sounds like her job kind of replaced what she maybe was getting from her partner and that she needed that to. Yeah. You know, I see this a little bit too working in academia where people go get their PhDs and then teach and are involved in academia. And it's like, that's their passion. That's their everything. And so I, I know that these types of people who are really like tied to their jobs in ways because it's it's not just their career. There's like passions that are interwoven in that that can really be hard to let go of. So. I, I see it. I can get it. And I wish them the best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, part of me also wonders, I don't know, I think Gary's a little bit of a player. And uh, so it's like, yeah. I'm sure he's gotten or, a lot of attention after like being The Bachelor. And Gary's a hot old guy. Like, I mean, for being what, 70? Like, he's he's good. He's Again, this is total speculation. But I do think if you were getting a lot of attention, that it would maybe be easier to like... <laughs> Not stand by Teresa and her job and just see what else is out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely. But, sorry, I'm just throwing some shade. No, no, no. But, I'm not a huge Gary fan. I know. I'm not really particularly either. I don't know why I'm sitting here like trying to make it sound like it's all Teresa. <laughs> like, <laughs> Gary is sus for sure. It takes two to tango. Absolutely, it does. So I don't know. I, have we ever found out who the Golden Bachelor is going to be? Bachelorette? No. Ugh, what are we doing? Probably Susan, but... I think it's going to be Susan with how much they've had her on television. I know. Yeah, it's true. I will be honest. I would prefer Susan over Leslie. Yes. Yes. Because I think Susan will be hilarious television. Yeah, Leslie Leslie still has... I mean, I hope she's, she's grown from this and has a lot more confidence, but it's not always fun to have people on there who have just a lot of baggage that it's difficult to work through because it's like I don't know if the show's for you like it's yeah. just opening you up to even more heartbreak and it did and it did <sighs> so much so that she had to push it off onto Kelsey so yeah fingers crossed that we get Susan would be great yeah and we didn't mention this after covering the last episode of The Bachelor but they did not mention Paradise at all Mandy so I think Paradise is not happening that's like what we live for. I know. I'm interested to see if they're going to like surprise us with something that's going to replace Paradise. But as of right now, there's like no whisperings or mutters. Nothing. I haven't been on Reddit as much. The past couple of weeks have been a lot just like with work and everything. But yeah, I haven't heard anything like any rumblings at all. So RIP. Boo. All the drama. 
No I mean, cakes in the fire. Don't get me wrong. Golden Bachelor was a treat just because it was so new when we hadn't experienced it before. And I thought it was a really smart way for the show to mix it up. That being said, it's still the same formula as The Bachelor. Yeah, they're not really giving us anything new. And now that we've experienced The Golden Bachelor and hopefully The Golden Bachelorette, it's sort of like, okay, we don't need another show like this, though. Yeah, and the thing that I liked about Paradise is it's taking all these people and just shoving them on a beach, and it's com- it's way more messy. It's way more realistic for people to create relationships. Um, so I'm going to miss that. <laughs> if it's gone. What are we going to do in the summer? I don't know. Big Brother's too much. But. <laughs> I mean, we would really need our, our listeners to be on board. What is that? Big Brother. <laughs> yeah, that's a commitment. I'm not against it, but it's a big commitment. They should do like a house thing with Bachelor people. Yeah. Well, and we've talked about it. I think they should just do something similar to Bachelor Pad and gamify it. And we've been talking about how they should gamify The Bachelor for a while. And it's like, if you meet somebody, awesome. But also, if you win money, great. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and the Olympics are this summer, so. Oh, yeah. We talked about that they could do a summer games. I don't know. We'll see. But I really hope that, that they don't just get rid of Paradise and then. Give us nothing. Yeah, because there's so many great people that go in and out of the franchise that people are fans of and they want to see more of. Yeah, I will say that a lot of the women on Joey's season were really excellent. Right? Oh, excuse me. I would love to see them on the beach. And you know who else I would like to see is Gabby from Zach's season. Yes. Love Gabby. Yes. I don't know. There's just people. She's, it's like, she's not single anymore. Oh, she is not? No. She's dating a really cute guy. Oh, good for her. I know. She looks happy. Well, she's so beautiful. I love her makeup tutorial videos. <laughs> She is so beautiful. It's true. Okay. Okay. That I think, was our bachelor corner, I guess. Yeah, that's all we got because that's all there is. So are we going to get into Vanderpump? Vanderpump. Well, okay. You watched this episode more recently than I did. I rewatched I, it because I, I was like, this episode deserves some respect. <laughs> it does. I'm really glad you did that because I slept instead of that's rewatched good. stuff. I learned how to roller skate today and it about killed me. This so. podcast is a collaboration. You know, you pick up some areas, I pick up other I love areas. It. Perfect. Okay, I think the first thing we should talk about is what are your opinions on Anne wanting to work for Ariana instead of Tom? <sighs> like, uh, two things can be true. <laughs> and I feel like it's true. That Tom is a nightmare human being Mm -hmm. that sucks to work for. Mm -hmm. And I think that Anne getting to witness Ariana and get to know her just through the bizarre situation, I understand why Anne wants to go work for Ariana. Mm -hmm. Like, I totally, totally get that. I understand Ariana's, like, little bit of hesitancy, but, like, also... Uh, it's messy. And I think she's got to wait until Ariana moves out. But I think that ship has sailed and she is Ariana's assistant now. I don't think she is. Oh, really? I had read that she was. But I don't really. Now that I'm saying that, it's been a while since I saw that. So maybe it's I not read true. that as well. Um, I think what's happening now, um, as far as I know, is that Anne has promised work at the sandwich shop. But the sandwich shop is still not open. Yeah. Wow. And Anne has a podcast, so. Oh, yeah, something about NDAs. Yeah. But my, I agree. My take is I don't blame her for wanting to work with Ariana over Tom. That being said, one, like, maybe don't have the meeting in the house. Yeah, that was just not a good move. That's bad business. Yeah, that, I felt really uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, there's a world in which, like, if Ariana doesn't want, a, you know, an assistant to also act as a maid, and probably doesn't really need to come to the house all that often either. You know, they conduct their business via FaceTime or whatever mm-hmm. and then meet wherever. And it, so it was kind of like, what are you guys doing? You're, like, baiting Tom at this point and not to defend that asshole, but, like, a little bit of baiting because I would be mad too. Well, logistically – If you interview for another job at the job you're working at, you shouldn't be surprised if you get fired. Yeah. So I, 
I definitely think it was produced and it, you know, they like set this whole thing up. But also not defending Tom, but I also don't blame Tom for being like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I do think Ariana said that she wouldn't hire Anne until she had moved out. Okay, good. She, I, I feel like that was part of the conversation where she was like, I feel like it'd be complicated, but when I get my own house, like tra la la. So I don't know if Ariana would have ever considered like hiring Anne to be doing what Anne was doing for Tom while they were still living together. Yeah, for sure. Weird. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so then Ariana goes over to visit Katie and they briefly talk about. Katie's little escapade with Max. <laughs> the revenge fuck. Um, and Katie references that she kind of didn't care and she was just like drunk and having a good time. And she's like, yeah, I mean, the timing was, you know, coming off of finding out about Sheena and Schwartz making out of Vegas. But like, I also don't owe Schwartz anything. Yeah, and it's true. She doesn't. And also like, the the indignant way that all of those dudes act were acting over that like get out of here i oh mean God. he had Don't no even respect get me started yeah just like okay friend group is apparently fair game because it's always been fair game because of tom like get out well and tom saying that raquel was like on the fringe of the friend group fuck off is she ariana's best friend or not yeah she was not on the fringe of the friend group she was in all of the scenes last season. Yeah. Tom Sandoval paid, f- what, $4,000 for the, you know, the engagement. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. She's not fringe. <sighs> the revisionist history is infuriating. Um, I guess that takes us to the water tasting. <laughs> the water tasting. What did you think about the water tasting? <laughs> I would be high key not for that. <laughs> <laughs> you would, like, rather do, like, chocolate milk or soda. Like, there's so many other things you could taste. Yeah, donuts. I don't know, like, anything except for water. You know, like, I just, I drink LaCroix or Le Kirkland's or whatever, and it's fine <laughs> because, you know, I'm fizzy and whatnot. But, like, it's just not something that excites me the way that it excites Lala. So on the one hand, I do think it's interesting to compare and contrast things with flavors, so I'd be into it. But on the other hand, I'm totally Team Katie when it's like a wine tasting is much more fun. Obviously, sober people can't taste wine, but I agree with you. Tasting other things would be more fun than a water tasting. It doesn't even have to be alcohol. Exactly. Yeah. A donut tasting sounds great. Oh, yeah. Um, Really quick. Katie working out with everybody at the beginning really made me laugh and her being like, this is not fun. Like, I don't get this endorphins bullshit that people talk about and uh, (laughs) like, this isn't fun. Yeah. Katie with all the truths this episode. (laughs) Um, I, I don't agree with her on that one, however, but yeah. Teach their own. For sure. I appreciate her being honest. Same. It it makes me laugh. So we did the water tasting and there's a thousand dollar bottle of water. That is, it's a grift. cuvee because it comes from two natural springs that I love that you join together. Cuvee, that French. Yeah, I think um, it's a wine where it's like a Bordeaux blend and it's oh. like two groups. Okay. I think that that was the comparison. But Interesting. A thousand dollar bottle of water. And I think that- I'm not we- refined enough for a thousand dollar anything. Yeah, like, same. Lala was like, oh, I'm into it. And everyone else was like, oh, my gosh. Then she's like, like, she's like, she would fuck with that. Oh, yeah, I'd fuck with that. Lala. Um, but then out of the water tasting comes a lot of drama. Or wow. tea. Tea. You make tea with water. We made a lot of tea, tea. this episode. This is true. So much. It starts with Katie and Schwartz's conversation about the Max escapade. Yeah. Man. What do you think of Katie's outfit? I will say that I've been really enjoying Katie's adventurous style. That outfit was not my favorite. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I'm with you. I really want to be behind a lot of what she's wearing because I think in some ways her and I have similar shapes. And so I'm always like, ah, I wonder, you know, but then that one I was like, 
I don't, I don't know if I would do it. So when Schwartz called her out for it, I wanted to punch him in the nuts though, because like, fuck you, buddy. You don't get to talk about her clothes. I mean, but he only called her out because she called him out first. That's so true. I think that was fair. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> You're into Schwartz's style. The, the Was that the shirt that you liked or was it? Not collectively. Oh, only okay. his ITM shirt. Gotcha, gotcha. That's fair. <laughs> Not to call you out either. It's I, fine. Everybody can have their own style. I, I don't blame Katie for calling him out on his outfit that episode. Um, but I think if you call out someone on their, up, their outfit, then yours is also up for wear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that she was sort of just like, my life doesn't evolve around you and... Oh, yeah. I'm going to do what I want to do. I honestly found the entire, I mean, don't get me wrong. There was some infuriating double standards and like things I had great issues with in this conversation. But I found the whole interaction kind of hilarious to watch because they were both just kind of laughing at each other and jabbing each other the entire time. Yeah, it was incredibly snarky. Yes. But they were giving as good as they got. Totally. So it was like, okay, yeah, I actually enjoy this. It's not somebody tearing another person down or like there was, it was very well balanced. Yeah, I agree with that. But I love that even in that moment, Schwartz is distracted by the fact that Tom and Ariana are fighting. fighting. Yeah. And he like can't get past it. And it's like, and this is why Katie divorced your ass. Like, totally. Yeah. So um, Schwartz uses some arguments about how, the like no hooking up with friends in the friend group was a flimsy agreement and Katie was like this is why we didn't make it because you feel like anything that I really cared about was flimsy yes I thought that was such a good point that like every and it's true Tom was never there for Katie at all at any turn and like you know fine any given person you don't have to agree with anything they say but like if you marry somebody there is sort of an agreement of like you do need to have that person's back and if you don't why are you in a relationship with them like and if you feel like you can't have their back then you need to sit down and have a conversation with them about why you can't have their back yeah exactly but tom never did no it was always you know some derogatory thing towards katie and then his itms he's like well, at least Katie's a fuck up too now. Katie is not a fuck she up. She is not a fuck up. Oh my God. She's so hot. She's so like, uh, she's fine. She is not Schwartz pushing, you know, 40 something, you know, having a midlife crisis. She's fine. Also, just because she made out with your best friend now that you are divorced, um, it does not mean that she's on the same playing field as you who has made out with so many people and- who made out with Rachel when he knew that Tom but and Rachel also, were fucking. how many times did he make out with people while they were married? Did he do that? Yes. Oh, he's an asshole. Married slash dating. Oh, yeah. And in this most recent episode, he was like, well, statistically speaking, I was loyal for like most of the time. Ooh. Like, who the fuck says that, statistically speaking? And then he's like, yeah, we were together for 12 years and there's 365 days in a year. So if you... Like, do the math. Like, I was, like, collectively loyal. Dude, like, fuck you. Like, yeah. That's, Katie is not a fuck up compared to that. No. He is such a fucking asshole. God, I hate that Tom. I hate all the Doms. Yeah, I didn't love that. Um, And so that he ends it trying to be like, can we just, like, move forward? Like, blank slate. Like, we could just go to dinner. It's not a date. And she's like, I don't want to. And he's like, okay, that's fine, too. <laughs> she's like, yeah, it's fine, because I don't want to. Um. But I do feel like there was something about this conversation that felt a little sexually charged. Dude, suddenly they have chemistry. I know. I'm like, okay, well, being married or being married didn't work for you, but being divorced works very well for you. I know. And he even like left the house scene saying like, call me Katie. I don't know. It was just like, I felt like there was something there for a second. Ew, yeah, I, I saw that too. <laughs> it, it makes me mad sometimes that I buy his charming act. Well, I think a lot of people do. So you're not alone. Okay. Ugh. But I understand being mad at yourself for falling for it. I know better. And anyway, that guy. Meanwhile, inside. Tom Sandoval trying to do the absolute most. Running back out at the pizza guy. <laughs> I to, loved Ariana calling that out. To be like, do you have ranch? I mean, I would be upset if I ordered ranch and there was no ranch. So not... Celebrating Tom's actions, but I would appreciate anyone who would try to get the ranch. <laughs> That's fair. But he admitted to it. I don't know. His podcast started playing 
on my phone as I was driving over here. And he brings up the ranch thing. And he's like, I felt like it would make me a hero. So I was going for the ranch. And so Ariana called him out perfectly. Yeah, she knows. Yeah, like, you why know, is he going above and beyond? You're not with somebody for 10 years and don't learn. Yeah, like, oh, now you want to get the ranch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now you want to get the ranch. <laughs> I was so glad that Ariana went off. Like, I get it. And also, the way the men squirmed over her anger was just, mm. like, I love watching them squirm, but I hate it because, like, obviously this all blows back onto her versus, like, yeah, them not having any awareness of their own behavior of, like, well, you're inviting Tom Sandoval to hang out less than, what, four months after he blew up their 10-year relationship by cheating on her with her friend and is showing... Not only no remorse, but cannot keep his mouth shut. And, like, he just wants to say shitty things about her. Like, maybe just don't even do that. Oh, my God. So when she brings up, like, the dog thing and his response to it is, like, you never clean the litter box. I wanted, I wanted blood. Oh, yeah. I could not believe that he was, I mean, I could believe it because it's Tom Sandoval. But the fact that he was. What is the word I'm looking for? Deflecting. Yeah, the fact red that he herring. was deflecting and bringing up the fucking litter box, which they magically have um, footage of her cleaning the litter box. But I was just like, dude, just fucking take accountability for making a mistake with the dog and say that you're sorry. But you don't need to bring up how many shits are in the litter box. No, and he does this at every turn too, right? Like, what about his um, Yeah, well, she doesn't pay any bills. Well, she's the laziest person I know. Well, I was just like, oh, it doesn't mean that you're not the biggest piece of shit to walk the earth, Tom. Amen. Two things can be true. But also I keep going back to this because like, remember, Ariana's mental health has been a point of discussion. Like that was a big part of the storyline as to like why Tom wasn't happy because Ariana was depressed. And then like, I don't know why anybody expects her to be any less depressed now that her partner of 10 years betrayed her. Like, it makes sense why she has chicken skewers next to her bed. It makes sense why she's not cleaning stuff. Like, everybody fuck off. And I really can't get over the fact that, like, nobody seems to understand that your mental health issues get compounded by the things going on around you. And also, your private space is your private space. And you get to do with your private space whatever you want to do. And if you need to have some to-go boxes in a pile, like, is that preferable? No. But if that's what you do in your space, that's your business. Yeah. So s- stop attacking her about her garbage. She's a responsible dog owner. She shut the dog out of the room. Her garbage is not the problem. No, not at all. Yeah. Ugh, that made me so mad. And just the, the group's lack of awareness around like their part to play. They're like poking her and provoking her and doing anything they can. And then they're like, oh, my God, Ariana, why are you so mad? My biggest issue with this episode and this next episode is everyone saying that Ariana just needs to not feel so angry because it would be better for her if she didn't have all of this, like if she didn't have all this rage or if it wasn't so pent up or I don't know, they keep projecting this idea that like, oh, if she didn't feel this way, it would be healthier for Ariana. Fuck you. Ariana can feel exactly what she needs to feel. And if it makes you uncomfortable that Ariana isn't okay, that's a you problem. That's not an Ariana problem. Yeah. This one hit really. Especially three months after. Yeah. Like if this was a year after or if it was like Ariana yelling at someone else and projecting her anger onto someone that wasn't Tom, you know, there are instances where it's like, okay, like, are you okay? Right. But Tom provoked it. Deserved it. Definitely. The fucker shouldn't even be around. So he's lucky that, you know, he's not in the hospital. Oh, my gosh. She, in Sheena's ITM where she said, this is the best thing that's happened to Ariana <gasps> because she has all of these opportunities. It, it, right. They're saying the, the thing that you shouldn't be saying out loud, which is how much they value money and fame and all of these things and not just true thriving happiness and like general well-being. It's shocking to me. Like if one more person says that Ariana's fine because she's got jobs, I just like, I'm going to riot. Like Ariana should be fine. She's doing all these things. Like she's over it. Why is she still angry at Tom? 
like she's not over it. And they I think they touch like we see her break down over it in this the next episode where she does like rightfully admit that she's devastated. And of course she is, but these people aren't the people she's going to talk to it about because they're, they're being all assholes. Being BFFs with Tom. Yeah, and like not a safe space for her. So, I don't know. It was really really maddening and I'm team Ariana for screaming at Tom. Same. Well deserved. I I don't think she needed to threaten to call the police on him, but everything else same. <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like she was kidding on that and it makes me laugh a little bit, but I like No, man. The rage in her eyes, I was like I wouldn't fuck with it. Yeah, don't call the police. <laughs> They're not helpful in domestic disputes anyway. Um, all right. So where do we go after that? Um, well, I don't know. If you watch on just, I guess, Bravo, this scene was a deleted scene. But the next scene is uh, Kyle Chen and Tom and Tom, like, go out for drinks. Oh, yeah. And he calls Katie a hypocrite. And also Tom Sandoval calls Ariana uh, literally the laziest fucking person. And then her response with that, to that was like, well, I've written a book. I, you know, did Dancing with the Stars. I've done commercials. Like, I got a job on Broadway. So, <laughs> yeah, she is not lazy. Like, she, what if, what has Tom Sandoval yeah, done? what are you doing? He got on the one show and got eliminated, what, like, almost immediately? Oh, yeah. So, the challenge... No, um, he's not cool enough for the challenge. It called? It's like a Navy SEALs show. No, I watched it. What is it called? Mm. I don't remember. D- don't watch it. Don't. Yeah, that's that's the conclusion we came we to. We have to comment, though, on Lala's fucking shade about the trash bag. Ew. Lala needs to just, I, I don't swear know. she is coming at Ariana, and it makes me want to go Ariana on her ass. I know. It's really disappointing because Lala should be somebody that would be very team Ariana for all the right reasons. And instead, she's just like, at every turn, she's like, what's the worst decision I can make? And then she makes it. And it feels like I, I'm i not here for it. I, I, I actually unfollowed Lala on Instagram because I was so annoyed by it all. And like, not that it matters, but I just like cannot with her anymore. It's too much. I'm so confused because it seems so not on brand for Lala. I would genuinely describe Lala as a girl's girl. And this is crazy to me. I really don't understand I think her bullshit. If I can, like, we'll see. I'm going to make a prediction. Lala's going to come out if this show continues or she stays in the reality TV limelight and will admit that she was really struggling with some things related to Randall, jealousy, you know, not being able to separate her situation from Ariana's situation. I mean, and I hope she comes around because, like, there is no reason for her to be acting this way. Um, it's out of line. It's unhinged. But, yeah, her being like, well, Ariana should know how to throw things away. Didn't she do a trash bag commercial? Or, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. But I was like, that's some fucking shade. Yeah. That's that's below the belt. Yeah, it's rude. Lala just, like, I don't know. She's so pointed. Yeah. I don't know. Lala's not softer with anybody either. Also, it she's seems not like. saying shit like this about Sandoval. No, that's the thing that gets me about all of this is everybody's really mad at Ariana. Everybody's really mad at Joe. Everybody like is mad at everybody else except for the fucker who is responsible. And that is Tom Sandoval. Like the misogyny is just oozing at this point. Like Tom should be getting just as much ire and shit as everybody else. But because he's like trying to put on this like I'm moving on act. They're like, why isn't Ariana moving on? Well, Ariana didn't cheat and blow up her 10-year relationship. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too much. I don't like it. I'm not here for it. Um, I love that Ariana had the designer come over and, like, tell her everything that she bought, which was oh, apparently yeah. a lot of stuff. Good for you. Yeah, because Tom's favorite line, I guess we can just move straight to beach day. The line in the sand. sand. Oh, yeah. The line in the sand, but also his line about how Ariana doesn't pay for anything. He's just like, 
he's always deflecting. I think that was wild to watch him on Nick Vial's podcast do the exact same oh thing God. and just be like, you are the most infuriating person ever on the, like, the face of the earth. At least on the after show, Sheena finally was like, I really wish Tom Sandoval would stop bringing up what he's paying for and what Ariana is or isn't doing. Like that's not doing him any favors. The broken clock is right twice a day and Sheena <laughs> said something smart. Like, yeah, that's perfect. Sheena, God. Um, beach day. I oh, lo- this group. <laughs> I love that Ariana knew that Sandoval was coming because of the top that was in the dryer. The dryer. Yes. Yes. We know our partners. We do. That she can roast him too. I am I would not wear that to the beach, but go Tom. Um Wow. Uh let's talk about the Brock of it all. Ooh. Brock and Sheena just deserve each other, right? Like at this point, they're both just like so insufferable, just stupid people. Well, I'm so confused because in the beginning of the season, I was kind of grateful that Brock was kind of playing this voice of reason, especially like in the Tahoe episode where I felt like he was willing to kind of have these harder conversations with Tom Sandoval and be like, you need to understand where we're coming from yeah. and tra la la. But now it seems like he's done a 180. And I don't know if he's just trying to get camera time or be more relevant, which I think he's very thirsty for. Oh, yeah. But That's why he's always wearing like Speedos and his thighs are always out. And, you know, he's he's working his angles. He knows where he looks good. I mean, he looks good in a Speedo, so. But. <laughs> Not mad about it, but. <laughs> but his comment about the Raquel thing. Yeah. And I, too, I don't give Tom Sandoval very much credit, but immediately Tom Sandoval, like, shut it down. And Ariana was like, are you really going to talk about this in front of me right now? And then it just was like the gates opened. opened. Oh, yeah. It is disgusting behavior. They really just like do not have an ounce of empathy for Ariana. And it is really shocking to me that nobody can understand how his presence, these conversations about women he's dating or what he's doing is like really legitimately triggering and upsetting. Also, just passively bringing up Raquel in the middle of all of this. Like, I swear he did that with the intention of starting shit. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. You think we're in a place to joke about it? Yeah. She was ready to call 911 over Tom <laughs> harassing her. Like, but I sure. don't think we're Bring ready for Raquel. this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hated that. That did not make me happy. And so then, I don't know, the Toms leave and Ariana's really upset. And Brock still continues to lay in on her and says, like, He's describing Tom Sandoval as being like castrated and he has his tail between his legs. And it's like, what? When? And Tom's been dating this whole time. Rachel talks about that on our podcast of that, like, even when she was in the Meadows, you know, before filming had begun for this season, he was dating. She was encouraging him to. Yeah. And he was pictured with women. He was out and about. He is not fucking castrated. He is not in the doghouse. He's fine. He is living... His most disgusting Tom Sandoval life. And when Ariana tries to appeal to the men and be like, I need you guys to start calling him out because he's such a misogynist that he will only listen to you. Like, it's my anger is not going to do anything. But if you guys actually call him out on his bullshit, he'll maybe listen. And I thought that was, first of all, so smart and so true. Mm -hmm. But also so fucked up and so sad. Yeah, like, why are you... Ariana needs to find new friends. Which I, I think she will. And I don't know how much longer this is all going to exist. But Ooh, yeah, that was not great. So episode, the next episode picks up. Oh, right. well, the same day. The yeah. same day. So they all go to the bar. Yeah. And that's where Tori's there. Tori is there. Tori being Sheena's 24 year old friend that she's Ex-nanny? been. nanny Yeah, maybe that's how she knows her. But she's like, I've been hanging out with her for a decade. And I'm like, since she was 14, Sheena, how old are you? (laughs) I don't want to hang out with 14. I mean, maybe I do. I don't know. I guess like when the kids in my life hit 14, like I definitely will hang out with them. But I'm not going to be setting them up with my 40-year-old friends when the time comes. You know, like that's weird. Can Sheena stop playing matchmaker? Ugh. So that's funny that Tom and Tom are flirting with a bunch of women and Tori walks into the bar. And then Katie walks into the bar and tells Tom to pay attention to the women that he was originally flirting with. And she walks off with Tori, who he is interested in. And she starts making out with him. Her. Her. 
My bad. I don't know why I said that. Her. Yeah. You're fine. I and da- Danny Pellegrino called this out, and I agree. I do think that this whole thing is very set up. While Tori is very attractive, um, and I can see how both Tom and Katie could be interested in her, this seems like a very curated moment for the show just to be like, you're going to be this person that both Tom and Katie are into because we want to talk about Katie, who's now more fluid, but also we want to like create beef between them because Tom and Katie beef is like, drama for the show well and we know again from Rachel's podcast that they do stuff like this they orchestrate these things and I could see this being a like a bit that both Katie and Tom agree to yeah because neither one of them are very upset by it and are just like so blase just like I will say Katie's drunk kiss with her was pretty hot it was hot I want to make out with Katie <laughs> she's got good lips she's got great lips I know I'm like huh I bet she smells good, too. She seems like somebody who would smell really good. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Tori, but... Tori goes on a date with Tom, and the next day she's painting with Katie. Yeah, that painting was also really weird because they're both just, like, painting, like, iPhone backgrounds. Like, what were they doing? I don't know, but when Tori was like, I didn't know that Bob Ross was alive when video cameras were invented, I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, this is why you don't date people who are so much significantly younger than you Um, because they say dumb shit like that and you can't not hear it. I was incredulous. What are we doing? Oh, my God, Katie. I mean, get some, but. Sure. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I could see how everybody feels that that's orchestrated. Um. Lala and uh, Sheena do talk to Ariana, though, at the bar, right? Yes. That. This honestly, while I do think that that was a nice moment on the show, like, I think it's really good that the two of them were listening and giving Ariana space to actually talk about her experience and why she was feeling all the rage and emotions. Yeah. But when you hear their fucking ITMs. And the way that they are talking about Ariana outside of this moment, it makes it really hard to watch. I think it's gross. Yes, I agree. I, yeah, I hated that. And that's the thing. It feels really like, I was, was it the previous episode where Brock is kind of like talking shit on Ariana and Sheena's like, Brock, Brock, you have to understand from Ariana's standpoint. And then in her ITM, she's like, I could never say anything that goes against Ariana even if I feel that way. And it's just like, you do feel that way and you do say it. I don't know why you guys are uh... pretending like you're not saying, (laughs) you're talking shit about Ariana every turn. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) Okay. Do you have like the memory of a goldfish? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. It's so wild to me. And yeah, I just, and it didn't get better. I mean, by the end of this episode, they're like not happy with Katie and Ariana again. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Kind of over that. Should we talk about Joe and Schwartz? Oh, poor Joe. Outside from anything else, like any feelings you might have about Joe and her relationship with this group, I did kind of relate to her ITM where she's like, I'm not grilling Sandoval about his relationship with Ariana. And like, if she's not in it, maybe she doesn't know. I don't know. However, what we do know is that her and Schwartz are definitely having sex. He's telling her he loves her. She thinks there's something there. She thinks they're in a relationship. But like when she was bleaching her hair and he's like, I went on a date. Well, are they like in an, like, is it, is it an open relationship? No. Okay. I think, I don't know how long this has gone on, but remember that she started staying with Schwartz a couple months after, and I just listened to the podcast that she was on with Rachel. So if you guys want more information, Joe was on. Rachel's most recent podcast episode. And Katie always said that she moved in with Schwartz like immediately after Schwartz moved in the apartment. But Joe said it wasn't for at least like a couple months after. Um, But that was a while ago. So that's kind of like. uh, And she said they didn't start like sleeping together or anything right away. But I think that her staying with Schwartz was probably the beginning of them getting close. right? Right. Yeah. 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 So. I think that this has been like a really long, complicated on and off situation where there was probably times, and I'm not justifying any actions, but Schwartz is getting out of a divorce. 
He's feeling really vulnerable. He needs and feels the need to be validated. Joe is there to validate. Oh, Joe one is of there those relationships. Yeah. So she's able to give him what he needs, but also he do, he's not ready to be in a relationship or commit to anything. So, so he's, yeah. he's taking advantage of her because she showed up and was what he needed at the time. Oh, that's awful. They called it breadcrumbing. I yeah. guess that's what the kids call it these days. Now I know. But breadcrumbing is right. So he just sort of like kept, gave her enough to keep her around and yes. make her think that something was coming or that like there was a relationship. But then they went to singles night together and he made out with another woman and she yeah, thought and they she- were just there to support Sandoval. But it turns out Schwartz was there to get it on too. Well, on Rachel's podcast, she said that on the way to singles night, they had a conversation and Schwartz said, like, I'm just going to do like a yellow or red wristband. Like, I'm not there to meet people. I'm just there for Tom. And then they get there and he puts on a green wristband. Oh, how So even that her. night, they're still having this complicated, like, she's under the illusion that he's somewhat committed to her. And I mean... It was kind of sad that she like invited herself to the singles night thing. I know that was awkward. And his face when she was bleaching you, his hair. I'm like, way to like also corner him so he can't move. And you're yeah. in control of everything in that moment. Like you could tell he did not want her to come. No. And that kind of sucks. Like, oh, Joe, read the room. But I guess how could you if she like is operating on all this different information? Like Schwartz is obviously feeding her bullshit. Yeah. And when we're in love, like we want to we see what we want to see in a lot of ways. Right. It's so true. Um, so we've all been there. Yeah, that's true. By the way, Saul said I could be your wingman. So have you met Mandy? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, I don't think I'll need any wingman anytime soon. No singles nights for us. But (laughs) yeah, I felt really bad for Joe. And then the conversation they had in his apartment where he was finally like, I'm dating people. I'm sleeping with people. I don't want a relationship. I think that she's been to Helen back, and I don't want to minimize that, but I was appreciative that he was that honest. Oh, me too. Like, finally. I don't know what it is. Like, you're never sparing anybody's feelings by not being honest. Like, just say it how it is. And, you know, yeah, you're probably going to hurt people, but it is so much less hurtful in the long run to hear the truth than it is to be strung along like that. Like, ugh. Because that's shit you have to work through in therapy. Yeah. Whereas if somebody's just honest with you, like it might sting for a little while and you're going to spend like a couple sessions kind of working through that. But like now she's got trust issues. Yeah. And then when she was like, well, it seems like we probably shouldn't hang out anymore. And he's like, okay. Like I could feel the heaviness with that. Yeah. And then she's like, I want to call my dad. And she leaves and. Oh, the dad thing was a little weird. I will admit on Rachel's podcast, she kind of goes into this a little bit more (laughs) because if you remember, she like compared Tom Schwartz to her dad earlier in the show, which was kind of like, oh, that's right. She did. That's weird. (laughs) And when she's getting her her birth chart read. Yeah. And on Rachel's podcast, she goes on to say, like, if you have a really amazing dad, why is it wrong to want to date or end up with someone who reminds you of your dad? And I just feel like, I don't know. That's like a weird thing to be so comfortable saying. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. while, I, while I totally understand the sentiment and I think it's natural for people to end up with partners have qualities of one of their parents. Absolutely. I do think it's a little weird to be like, I want to end up with someone like my dad. Yeah, and be if calling anybody, Tom towards her dad. If anybody ever, the partner was like comparing me to their parent. Just, I'm out. That's cool. Thanks, but no thanks. Like, that's not what I need. Yeah. But she's like. So don't. But yeah, I mean, she's, she's weird. She's a little weird. She is. And that's fine. People be weird. But I'm, I'm giving you context of the dad comment. Yeah. I. So that basically means that she like wants to marry Schwartz because Schwartz is her dad. Oh, yeah. I think she did though. Well, she talked about kids. Like they were talking about. I know. I know that. uh, I think she was really really in love with him and that's really really heartbreaking for her to be with someone who's like leading her on and taking her love and communicating love but also like not being who she deserves yeah that really sucked that you know uh tom's already a few pegs down for me but like he's negative too 
not cool. Don't do that to people. Be honest. Don't use people. And like, there's a world in which I think you can even be honest with somebody and be like, like really honest of like, I enjoy your company. It's soothing to me, but I am not in a place to be in a relationship. I don't see that changing. And like to be willing to come back and keep having that conversation. And as long as the other person knows and you can enjoy each other's company, like that can still happen too. But like you have to communicate that. And he clearly lied. Totally. That's, ugh, I hate that. Yeah, not a fan of that. That really sucked. Hot take. I didn't hate Tom Schwartz's blonde hair. I, I glad that we agreed on that because when I initially saw it I, on the show, I was like, actually, it looks pretty good. But as somebody who bleaches the shit out of their hair too, I will tell you, it very quickly goes south if you don't use the right shampoo and conditioner. You can't just be washing that with head and shoulders. You Which have I to use- think he probably was. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like blonde hair is very damaged as it is. So one, you need like high end stuff. And also it has to be purple because then you wind up with like that. Just like awful yellow straw hair. Straw hair from like the early aughts. Like, huh, it's not a good look. So I think all the pictures we saw of him subsequently with it were terrible because he didn't take care of it. Yeah. I thought the initial bleaching actually looked really kind of good. I was here for it. I like a good drastic change. Well, in his blonde ITMs, he's wearing this kind of like southwestern stripy shirt and he's got his fresh That's hair. Right. Yep, yep, yep. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like with his complexion and his dark eyes, he can actually rock the blonde hair. I wasn't mad at it. Yeah, he totally can. I thought he looked good. But well, then I don't think he knew how to take care of it. It is a huge pain to take care of. And then the roots are something else too. Like I will say that after James Kennedy threw the shade out there about his different colors of brown, I can't not see it now. Oh, it's so true. Man, And I had to text you because James is bringing it this season. I am just here for his like lightheartedness. He's taking everything the right amount of serious, like talking to Ariana and Katie at Top Golf and like talking about manifesting the tree house and how she she is manifesting it. She's talking about it. And like, I don't know. Yeah. Then the comment about that, the comment about Katie and Schwartz's weird dynamic. Oh my God. That was amazing. He is just like, oh. The relief we need. <laughs> I feel like he might be the only fun thing happening this season. Yeah. He and Allie are delightful. And I, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I even appreciated Allie not being super upset with Lala over the Joe thing. Like, I'm just here for those two. Okay. Let's talk about the Joe thing. Okay. The other Joe thing. Because we talked about this a little bit before. Yeah. Um, why don't you start? So Joe. Reaches out to Lala, I think because Schwartz recommended that sort of as like, which well, is also shady. Like, why is Schwartz? Schwartz and Lala have been kind of like rebuilding building. their friendship. Right, because they had an explosion last speech day. But then where this gets heated is she goes to girls night with uh, Katie, Sheena, and Ariana and just like pokes the bear. I just feel like she knew it was going to be a fight. And so she kind of went into it a little bit already defensive and like already expecting Katie's reaction. Right. She did not want to have that conversation with Katie. She just wanted Katie to be like wrong out of the gate and not acknowledge why that would be upsetting for Katie. And it's like, we're fucking adults. Like there's a world in which Lala can go have hot dogs with Joe and not upset Katie. But Lala just seems completely incapable of having conversations where she recognizes that two things can be true and that she can have her feelings and want to be building that relationship with Schwartz and not having beef with Joe and not wanting to have beef with people she doesn't need to have beef with and also respecting why Katie would be defensive and have her guards up about that and feel like unsettled by that situation yeah I feel like there's a way that Lala could have done all of this that was still respectful to Katie while also meeting up with Joe for hot dogs if that's what she really wanted yeah like she could have given Katie a heads up that she was going um she could have been less defensive about telling Katie about it and also like acknowledging Katie's experience and feelings yeah I think that she could have just said like hey first off not at girls night not in a loud bar but to be like hey this happened and I want to give you the floor first to tell me how you're feeling. Yeah, because I don't remember what podcast it was, but someone pointed out that when the Randall of it all was happening, Katie 
laid into Schwartz for playing pickleball with Randall and was like, you don't need to be spending time with Randall. And she was very much siding with Lala and creating those boundaries with Lala. And so, you know, I Katie is a very, if Katie's on your side, I would say she's a very loyal friend, almost to a fault, right? And so I think that she has done that for Lala during maybe Lala's time of like, these are my boundaries. Don't hang out with this person or you don't get to be in my life. And not saying that that's the same as Katie and Joe, but I'm just saying like Katie has been there for Lala. And I so I think in turn, it's not wrong of her to expect some communication or recognition from Lala about her feelings about Joe. Yeah. I Like I said, Lala is just assessing the situation and choosing the worst way yeah, to do everything. Soft. Yeah, soft towards. Yeah, what soft era? Yeah, this isn't soft. I think this it's is, more so just Lala like prioritizing her own needs and being a wrecking ball everywhere else. Yeah, when she had that conversation with Tom Sandoval in the backyard, and I think where she was coming from of needing to trust men again, it's like, okay, yeah. Tom Sandoval doesn't need to be one of those men. Right. Like, you are the one acknowledging that he's dangerous and, like, how obnoxious he is and all of these things. And those things, like, maybe Tom's not dangerous, but he is such a narcissist piece of shit. Like, he really is. He is not somebody that you need to, like, buddy up to. So, like, her just, like, her softness is also just so misdirected. Like, you're not at every turn. She's just getting it wrong. And it's so hard because I have liked Lala I think in the later seasons a lot. And now I just, I'm so over it. It's Same. so just, I, I, I know better than to like people on reality TV because you don't do that. But Lala is kind of somebody that I was like, okay, she's kind of cool. But it's just like, no, you're not. You're just as bad as everybody else. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to know what's true with Lala and what she's doing for the show. Well, and I was going to say, so. And um, Reddit, always. Hi. If you are on Reddit, I am too. Um, somebody pointed out listening to Lala's podcast and then watching the show how different she is and how it just feels like she's just playing to whoever her audience is at the time, that there's no consistency. She doesn't actually care about anything or anyone. She's just interested in a Making paycheck. Making a show. And like that can be fine. Good for Lala. I hope you're happy. But like, don't sit here and cast judgment on Katie and Ariana for existing how they're choosing to exist when you are also making arguably a worse choice on how to to handle your your personal affairs. So I just I don't know. It's it's too much like she can do that, but she also then can't be giving the shit that she's giving. I think it's also confusing because Lala was not always that way. I'm not saying she hasn't grown into that and this is like the evolved famous Lala, but I think like earlier Lala was really, um, she was very, she took strong stands against things Mm -hmm. and she was very adamant and she like went a thousand percent for those things that she believed in. And I genuinely believe that she like felt those things. Oh yeah. So I feel like you take the history of Lala and we're just still kind of assuming that Lala is that person. But I think that she's evolved into something else where now it's more so about creating good TV, staying relevant. How do I keep Tom on the show? Because he's a big part of why the show's successful. Like how mm-hmm. do I bring the Raquel thing in? Because that's a storyline. Like I think Lala is very smart and strategic and passionate, but I think her priorities have shifted towards like making a show versus like being genuine. Yeah. And I think (laughs) being honest, I am also that thousand percent person. Like I feel a thing. I feel the thing and I am committed to that. And like you will know. And so it also just like it feels like an even bigger letdown. Yeah. It it feels like she's not. Because even if you don't agree and I did, there's so many things that Lala's done where it's just like, girl, major side eyes. That's fucked. But at the same time, you can respect somebody who goes hard and is passionate about things and you're going to get shit wrong from time to time. Yeah. I like a person who gets things wrong too. Like, that's fine. But yeah, then for her to suddenly be this, it's like, whoa, what? Like, that's what I'm saying. Whiplash like she's, and they don't. She's not true to her own brand. And that's why it's so confusing. Yeah, it's a bummer. Boo. Was there anything else on this episode worth talking about? I know there was paintball, which whatever. Paintball hurts so bad. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Tom Sandoval, too, is such a tool. I'm sorry. I just sit here and shit on Tom Sandoval this whole, like, all of these podcasts. But, like, him throwing the 
the the smoke canister and like trying to be cool about all of that. It's like, okay, I know that there's a market for this, but whatever. We're not it. Yeah. I would play paintball though. I like paintball. <laughs> um, no, I don't think there's much else. The valley. I, this is also, I think, where I like lost all my steam for wanting to come out and podcast alone. And I'm like, I don't even know how to touch this. Like, <laughs> now that we've had two episodes of it, I think I am in a better space to talk about it. Also, the fact that you're back, I feel more comfortable talking about it. But like, wow, last week's episode was spicy. Yeah. The allegations and the accusations were. And like, I don't think these are the smartest people in the world. No. And so also part of me was like, you keep saying racism, but then every description you're giving is a bigot. So I don't quite follow. It was it was rough. Also, I guess I am really lowbrow, low class. I thought it was Capri, but it's Capri. Oh. Capri. I didn't know that. Capri. Well, I thought Jesse was being such a douche. I'm like, Capri, Capri. But uh, he's right. <laughs> he's still a douche. But that is, in fact, how you say it. The place in Italy. Well, I guess he goes there once a year. So he better be right. God, yeah. Hate that guy. He's the worst. The actual worst. I mean, he is, like, smart and manipulative and shitty and, like, is just not a good dad or partner or anything. Like, I think I hate him more than Jax, and it's because he's smarter than Jax, and so it makes him, like, I don't know. We don't know him very well, but I'm just like, you are a special breed of fucked up. Yeah, he's he's legitimately a guy that I would not feel comfortable around. Like, everybody else is just pretty stupid, and I think that, you know, obvious in a lot of ways, and he's somebody who is... I think he's, to me, man, he's he, manipulative intentionally. Yes. And I think that that is oftentimes like everybody's manipulative and some people are good at being manipulative without knowing it. And there are the rare few people who I think are manipulative and very aware of their manipulativeness. Yes. And he is one of them. Yeah. And that's scary. It is scary. I don't. Yeah. He makes me so uncomfortable and it was not helped in this episode or the previous one. I guess really the only thing to talk about is just like. The weirdness of this friend group. Yeah. So I think that this fight is about two things. I think it's about stereotypes and I think it's about hearsay. Yeah. And I think it, I honestly was a little annoyed that it took up as much space as it did this week since it felt like it took up so much space last week. Yeah. But First of all, I think it's bullshit that Kristen is the only one that's in trouble. I know. I hate that for Kristen. I mean, like, she definitely stirred the pot. Yeah. But she's not the only one flinging around these things. Clearly not. Like, and Zach even said in his ITM, to be called a Republican in California is basically social suicide. Yep. Like, you're just not going to recover from that. And all of the implications that go with being called a Republican, which is what Kristen responded to of reading between the lines of like, oh, well, Republican racist homophobe. And Michelle, I guess, did not understand the dangerousness of don't say gay bills and was promoting that. Um, but who's the other woman, the one that's pregnant? Janet. Janet, I guess, tried to correct her on that. And maybe she changed her tune and it sounds like maybe Michelle's not the best person. I think but like, Janet is really responsible for everything. I and she is agree. just pushing it on to Kristen. Yes, I agree. I was so shocked by the conclusion of all of this that like even Zach and Kristen finally were like, oh, it was Janet. Yeah. We've spent all this time screaming at each other, but. I think Janet's the mastermind. Well, and then she was standing there behind the door listening to the conversation. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, that's got mean girl vibes all over it. Like, if you're going to stir the shit, you be in it, too. And side note, it has nothing to do with her being pregnant, but the red-orange dress she was wearing at the Capri party, it had, like, a fringe bib. Yeah. I don't know. I love fringe, but I was like, why is this fringe on this high neckline? What is this even doing? Like, I could not... I couldn't stop staring at the fringe. I hated it. Yeah, it wasn't, it was not a good look. I don't know, but it's obvious that she's the one that created all of this and she's just willingly like chucking people under the bus. 
Yes. And willing to use pregnancy as like a way to get out of it. And I'm like, girl, no, that is devious. That's fucked. You can't do that. Like, oh, I appreciate it. This makes me like feel better about Nia. Oh, yeah. And um, man, I'm so bad with her name. Michelle? No, Nia and her partner. Oh, I don't remember his name either. Sorry. We should be better for um, Scott. I don't know. I really like them. I like them too. <laughs> I'm like, these people are relatable to me. They're talking about the hard things. They're trading off all these duties. Also, when he brought up lo- love languages with Jax and Jesse. Yeah. And they were like, that's stupid. I was like, this guy. Well, he's married to Miss America and you're not. So, <laughs> or like yeah. Miss Universe or something. Like, she, al- he also is in a, what s- seems like a healthy relationship. Well, yeah. They're having, real conversations about real things they like they seem to have good communication about all the things like I'm sure they're not perfect no relationship is he's watching the twin newborns and their other child while she goes out of town to do her pageant work yeah and he's just like okay like, we'll be here we'll figure it yeah. out <laughs> yeah and like dad should not get credit for that like 50 50 work but like it is really cool to see people who are just like not codependent having good communication Clearly very sleep deprived with newborn twins and a toddler. And they're good. And yeah. I love that for them. Um, so shout out to them. Yeah. So far, we're fans. They're the reason we watch. Brittany is pretty funny too. I mean, Brittany is just a hot mess. Yeah. And I do think it's interesting that they've started bringing in some of the storyline about Cruz's speech. Oh, that's got to be scary, too. Like, that's hard as a parent. That's, I mean, I don't know. But, like, I would imagine. Well, I feel like so many of these shows, it's, like, about having the, you know, shiniest, flashiest, perfect life. And so, I mean, that would be really hard as a parent to go through that with your child. Well, and props to them if they feel comfortable with that because speech therapy is something that kids do have to do. And there is regression. And who knows why it happens. And so, like, maybe that's the validation that a parent needs of, like, hey. This is this is just all part of the process. Yeah. So and like to see Jax actually handle something well and thank God it's with his kid. I'm like, OK. But when he was interviewing those women at the bar. Oh, Jax. Like, is, what the fuck? I know. That he, was gross. He is gross. I know. I shouldn't give Jax any praise whatsoever. But <laughs> it's all right. We can ping pong. Yeah. He you say something nice. I'll counteract it with a normal Jax thing. Perfect. Yeah. He's he's gross. I, I, ugh. Did you know that Brittany left him? And yeah. she's now talking about the separation, like, more seriously. And yeah. she's like, I think Jax thought that I was going to come back. Well, And people, I'm not. People speculated it was a publicity stunt. Yeah, and it's not. It's she's, not. She's done with his shit. She should have been done with his shit when he slept with Faith and, like, all of that happened. I mean, not. I know. They never should have gotten married. I guess there was, because I've rewatched fairly recently, when Jax's dad died, he goes through this whole transformative, like, I'm going to be the person my dad always wanted me to be. And I feel like, and that was the season before their wedding. And so. Well, yeah, because he used his inheritance to buy that ring. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm not excusing Jax's behavior, but I'm saying if I was Brittany and all of a sudden this man that I'm in love with is sh- like turning a new page and showing up and doing all the things that I want him to do and showing me the affection I need. Oh, and for sure. I'm not, I want. I'm not blaming Brittany for that. It just makes me sad because I think she's so funny. Like no, she deserves great. so much better than fucking Jack Staler. It just is a bummer that, you know, I think she thought that Jack's had changed and it's very evident that Jack has not. Sorry, Jack's has not. No. Ugh. I can't imagine how it feels for her to like, I mean, it's one thing. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, like, Saul and I don't talk about, like, people who are attractive around us. It's not that, like, your partner can't be attracted to somebody else. But just he is so gross. It is He's never gross. consensual. It is always, like, leering. And I just can't imagine being Brittany and watching this back Mm-mm. and, like, ugh, ugh. Um, I do think if the show continues that they will both stay on the show. That would be... So I'm just saying. I don't, is that going to be Ariana and Tom Sandoval 2.0? <laughs> like, how is that going to work out? Well, so Zach went on Nick Vile's podcast and they were talking about the Valley. And Nick was basically saying, Jack's like, 
Jax is made for reality television. He's not going to leave the show, even if they're separated. Like, Jax isn't going to back down. Oh, no. He has no shame. No. But, um, and Zach's argument, and I agree with Zach, is like, yeah, but why should Brittany have to leave the show? Because yeah. just because Jax isn't leaving. Um, so that could be interesting television, a separated couple who is now dating in the friend group. I don't know. In the friend group. I mean, poor Cruz, but oh, yeah, that's rough. I know. I just keep thinking about him getting stuck under the couch and just <laughs> nobody really knowing where he was for a second. And it was only a second. This isn't a parent judgment. Just like it's got to be hard to be that kid. Um, another positive note for the Valley. I love Luke. Luke. Yeah, man. The way he stood up for Kristen at the, the coffee dinner, I was like, damn, you don't cross that man. He is there for his woman and I am here for this. These assholes think that he is just quiet and a pushover, but I loved him standing well, up for Kristen. Didn't Jax make some sort of implication that Luke is like using Kristen or something? Yes. And I'm like, what are you? I mean, and I guess, okay, in fairness, Jax does know Luke better than we do. So like maybe there are things we're not seeing, but like Kristen seems... For the first time, like, very happy. She is able to have hard conversations and admit when she puts her foot in her mouth. And, like, Luke is able to be like, yep, you did that. But so what? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm here for it. He seems like a, just a normie. He seems like a good partner. Yeah. And I love that his dog's name is Jill. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why. I just love well, that. that's so sweet that he like had all those roses. Oh my gosh, he the recruited. romantic gesture! I know. And Brittany and the guy's name who we can't remember, Scotty. I swear to God, I I'm sorry. We should know names, but um, yeah, I thought that was really sweet. Also surprising that he's 32. Yeah. He looks older. He does look older. That's but okay. But apparently he's got the sex drive of a 32-year-old and a really big dick. So good for Kristen. That's so funny to me. I guess I was unaware that men lost their libidos after. Is that a thing? I didn't know that. I didn't know I, that. I, I'm like, men just have sex, sex drives. That's like what they do. Well, so. if they don't, they have pills. So It's true. Yeah. It's not like being a woman. Oh, <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Anyway, I thought that was such a funny comment. I don't know. Thus far... I'm a Luke fan. Yeah. He I, was pretty funny in the after show, too, uh, for Vanderpump. They, like, always bring in, like, a low-key question at the end that doesn't hold a lot of weight. And I think they were all just talking about uh, Schwartz's hair. And Luke was there with Nia and Michelle, which was very funny to me, too. Well, I think the women really like Luke. It's the men that don't, don't like Luke. Ugh, they're threatened by a good thing. They're like, this guy isn't a douchebag like we are. Yeah. He's going to oh. show us up. The women like him? Weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he treats people with respect. He defends Kristen. Well, I think it's the first episode they referenced how all the women like Luke and Luke was just like in the pool and all the women were like around him talking <laughs> to that's him. That's right. They were, they were talking about like breastfeeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I was like, okay, Luke's a keeper. For sure, because he was just rolling with it. He's like, we can absolutely talk about these bodily functions related to children because Kristen and I are trying to have children. Yeah. And he was just like totally fine with it. I'm still like sneaking tampons around <laughs> around some of the guys that I, you know. Seriously. Like <laughs> well, is there anything else? I guess like I'm going to candidly ask you how you feel about continuing covering the Valley because we said we were going to do a soft cover. And I... I mean, granted, I'm kind of in a weird place emotionally. I could take it or leave it. I will probably continue to watch it regardless if we keep talking about it. But I'm just kind of a solid meh on it right now. Same. So I'm maybe, watching it because it auto plays after everything else. <laughs> and half the time I'm dead. So I'm just I keep watching. But well, you guys tell us what you think. Like, are you watching? Do how, you want us to talk about it? How was Pump? Oh, yeah. Rules? I, I started Vanderpump Villa. Vanderpump Villa. And it's yeah. on Hulu. I know. I need to, I'm behind. I literally just, it's Sunday and I watched the shows like two hours ago. So I'm a little behind on things. But what do you think? Is that worth watching and covering? I mean, I'm going to keep watching it. I think you would, well, I don't know. It's okay. So I would say if you guys watch Below Deck, it's almost like Below Deck meets Vanderpump Rules. 
I'm going to be honest. I keep getting confused by Below Deck and then some Star Trek cartoon show that I think is also <laughs> called Below Deck, but it might be Below Decks. What? <laughs> what is the other Below Deck? It's a Bravo show where they charter pri- like rich people charter private yachts. Oh. And so the people who run the boat, like the captain, the stews, the I don't know. Look people. at you know all the words. I'm like, well, that's because I watched the show. But it's it's like, you know, they they host these rich people. They have a private chef. They charter these yachts. They have like these day outings. So it's very much like that formula, but at a countryside villa in France. Whoa. Okay. And, and like all the drama is around the people working together. Okay. So you have servers, bartenders. Oh, okay. So like I get how that gets. That tracks. Well, anyway, if you want to do... Well, watch it. Okay, I'll like, watch it. Watch the first couple episodes and we can talk about it. Um, but to you guys, let us know how you feel about us covering the Valley. Let us know if you're watching Vanderpump Villa. I'll also put this on Instagram so that if if you see it, please engage with our polls so we know if you are interested. Um, otherwise, we will... I actually kind of had an idea that I'll talk to Jess about off the podcast, but we need to figure out what we're going to talk about because I don't think Bachelorette starts till June or July. Ugh. That's too bad. Yeah. And usually I think it's Vanderpump's going to be over probably by the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to do some soul searching, but we would love to know your thoughts. Yeah. Well, Ariana's going to be hosting Love Island. When does that start? Oh, I don't know. You know what's funny is I have tried – to watch Love Island multiple times because so many people have been like, oh my God, you have to watch it. I've tried UK. I've tried Australia. I've tried US. Wow. And I, I don't know, guys. I haven't gotten sucked in, but maybe we should try to support Ariana. We should try and support Ariana. I'm with you. I made it through like half a season and I was like, these people are so hot. There, and it was just not, unre- it was yeah. so not relatable to me. It was not relatable to me either. I was like, I, there's nothing for me here. But that's okay. I don't have to relate to everything I watch, you know. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. But yeah, we'd be curious what you guys think. Uh, and we'll just keep covering Vanderpump until there is no more Vanderpump. Sad. I know. And then, then the slog comes, I guess, until July. Well, All right. Sounds good. Okay, thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Drama Bonded is produced and hosted by Mandy Booth and Jessica Brumbaugh. Graphic designer is Pigeon House. Thank you.